we would be most conspicuous on this planet. <coughs> this is Earth in the beginning of the 21st century. Strangely, humans here still communicate with computers using devices like a mouse and a keyboard. Oh, I'll explain later. But their world will soon change. A technological revolution is underway that will enable their machines to communicate with them in a very human way. No, not in beeps. With normal human language. <sighs> Hello, I'm Anthony Daniels. I bet you were expecting to see my golden alter ego C-3PO. Well, I'm here to introduce you to a scientific wonder. Artificial intelligence. Artificial intelligence is trying to make uh, computers do uh, tasks that uh, require intelligence when humans do them. And my definition of artificial intelligence is simply that if a computer performs the same task, similar level of ability, and it's exercising the same intelligence that a human has. Artificial intelligence is granting machines the ability to speak like humans. As simple as that. Just think how useful that could be. Or take language, for example. Imagine if we could actually speak to our computers and they would actually understand us. Artificial intelligence is going to improve our world in ways we can only dream about. The dream began thousands of years ago in the ancient Chinese, Egyptian and Greek mythologies. The Greek god Hephaestus is said to have created an intelligent robot made of bronze called Talos to guard the island of Crete. In 1580, the Jewish mystic Rabbi Lau of Prague reputedly created a golem, a clay man that was brought to life. And early in the 17th century, Descartes proposed that the bodies of animals were nothing more than complex machines. But it wasn't until the 20th century, with the introduction of electronic computers, that the myth was transformed into a technological possibility. And the visionary who actually laid the foundations of modern artificial intelligence was Alan Turing. This brilliant British mathematician was one of the founding fathers of computer science. And it's here at Bletchley Park that he carried out work of vital importance. During World War II, using early computers that look really crude to our eyes today, he led the project to decipher Enigma, the Nazis' top secret code. Historians say that his work was crucial in bringing the war to an end. Turing was already working on, a, on what we now call artificial intelligence as early as 1943, which I can testify to from my personal experience because I was involved with him and, and uh, Jack Good um, in many of the discussions. But he first broke surface uh, and attracted a lot of attention in 1950 with a paper called Intelligent Machinery, which was published in a philosophical journal called Mind. Turing took an ingenious behavioristic approach to intelligence. He maintained that if something could exhibit human-like conversational abilities, then that something could be termed intelligent. And in 1950, he conceived of this practical test that in fact became the benchmark for machine intelligence. If, if a computer conversing on screen with a human being can convince that human that he or she is conversing with another human being, then that computer can be regarded as intelligent. Turing's contribution to artificial intelligence is in three major points. The first is identifying intelligence with language, with the ability to speak. The second is that intelligence is a matter of perception. What seems intelligent is intelligent. And the third is a consequence of the first two, and that is, machines can be intelligent, and one day will. 
in those days, 1950, it was regarded as a rather horrific uh, and absurd uh, and perhaps blasphemous notion in something like the same way that when Darwin suggested that uh, humanity was not unique in the story of evolution, it made a similar sort of furore.